All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to The Road Goes Ever On. I'm Sterling. I'm Mark. And today we are talking about Utopia. Season one, we're looking at the U.S. episode seven versus the U.K. episode five versions. In both cases, they are the second to last episode. So we are getting right until the end or right right up to the end. Let's get started with the opening. What did you think? Well, before we get to the opening, spoilers ahead. If you haven't watched the last, the second to last episodes of both shows, go watch those, come back, and then come enjoy the podcast. But that opening for the UK version, beautiful. I loved it. Told us so much with so little. We see the mansion. We go up to the mansion. We see, first we see a hostage with a bag over his head, which we're assuming is the guy that they took in the last episode. We see how all of the other uh, members of the gang are kind of dealing with everything. We see Wilson Wilson sleeping, kind of having a little rough, rough sleep, not, not quite sleeping. Ian, wide awake. We see Alice is sleeping. Grant not sleeping watching Alice and we see Becky beautiful sound composition we have all these different things almost we hear like somebody snoring like in the sleep beautiful opening wonderful wonderfully done I loved it so I'm the the music the 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 great thing about it is it just jumps you right in you know the music is fast-paced the cuts are very dramatic you know so it has like a close up on a plant and it cuts to black it doesn't you know go to the next scene it cuts to black and then it you know zooms in on kind of the the old house that they're in and it cuts hard to black and then it goes to the entrance of the house and it cuts hard to black you know and then you get to the room where the um where the prisoner is once again like it really is and and this is over a very short period of time with this high energy music you know so right off the bat it's giving you kind of reminding you that they're in this remote location in this old house you know that they have uh this person with them that they've caught that they're holding on to as a hostage so it kind of reminds you without having to seem like you know here's what happened before right and it it just it really jumps you in in just such a short period of time and has this level of energy that just makes you feel like it, it we're does. ready to go. Yeah, it completely just sets the tone for the episode. Like, this is a, you know, we're getting towards the end. This is high impact. What's going to happen? And it kind of, it, it has this sense of uneasiness. Like, what what's going to happen? They have this guy, you know, what do they know from this guy? Is it Mr. Rabbit? They've been looking for Mr. Rabbit. Is it him? And we find out it is not Mr. Rabbit. No. Now, if you compare this to the opening of the U.S. version, the the U.S. one, it starts off uh, blurry, you know, and kind of wobbly. Like the camera's a little wobbly, camera's a little bit blurry, and then it comes into focus, and as it comes into focus, you see, you know, Dr. Mike Stearns in front, and he's dealing with the fact that he just got hit on the head. He's coming to for probably being unconscious. It's slower, and it, I had a little issue with it because, you know, normally when you see these scenes where somebody is, you know, coming to from something like that, we see it from their perspective. So we would have seen, like, maybe the the floor, and then he's, like, looking up as it's getting blurry, and he, like, sees his right. wife... You know, and then it comes into focus. But he was. But blurry. instead, we yeah we we were we were the the third person omniscient, um, you know, narrator. <laughs> we... That apparently, apparently the cameraman also got bonked on the head. Yeah, he did. Well, actually, the, the cameraman was new. He actually just didn't have the camera in focus, and then they were like, "Oh, f- focus the camera," and then just left it in. They thought it would would work. And it just he's... like I I got what they were trying to do, but it was right. like. Who, who, who got knocked out? Who got knocked out? The cameraman did. And uh, the camera was fixed. And 
we did no cameras were were hurt in the filming of this by the way that was that was a stunt camera (laughs) well trained you see that you know dr mike stearns he wakes up he is kind of trying to figure out what happened as we are trying to figure out why the camera was blurry in that moment he is then told by his plant of a wife that you know he she start he starts kind of trying to figure out what's happening and she basically is like you're gonna drop everything you're not gonna talk about this anymore like kind of without explaining who she is right away basically says if you don't drop this go look on your computer and apparently there is some illicit pictures on there of some sort we don't know exactly what however i feel like it was a great homage to what happened to ian in the uk version how he got arrested for having uh child pornography and so maybe it was implying that that was that but i think that that was a very good homage of you know we've talked about how the uk version or the us version definitely loves the uk version and i think this was a little bit like a representative it um interesting you know when mike cerns sees that that globe and he's like this was in this is the same globe that was in dale's house last week i meant to say something there there was a purple candle in the corner that was the exact i thought the purple candle i was like huh they just really like that purple candle like maybe the same set designer was doing it and it you know turns out that harvest is actually basically setting up these houses they put colleen as a plant from the beginning she was meant to just basically keep dr michael stern's on lock from the beginning i also like the fact that harvest apparently has their own like harvest target supply warehouse you know where they have all the stuff for you know setting up a new house doing like they're they're ready for anything you know like they've got the child porn set up they've got you know the hardware section they've got like all the contingencies operation fun. they're kind of ready for <laughs> operation fun yes fashion and unified got... <laughs> something like that So I, I just I thought it was interesting kind of, you know, contrasting the two two different opening scenes because one of them jumps you right in, reminds you of what's going on, is, you know, without crazy actioning action happening, still feels like there's a lot of action going on. Everybody's um, asleep. And then the other one kind of slowly, you know, brings you back in. But what's going on with the gang? Let's uh let's talk about them. So we jump in with the US gang. And we see that they have, they, you know, they think Dr. Cerns is Mr. Rabbit. So they are planning to go in there. Well, Jessica Hyde goes in there and she's going to get some answers. Barges in. The whole gang goes in. You know, they lock, they zip tie them both together. You know, they, they're still convinced that Mike Stearns is Harvest. However... We find out, you know... They do a full undressing. Right, they're There's looking a whole, for the... uh, dick joke, you know, as uh, Ian has to pull the boxers open. And is like, whoa. Whoa. And then, let's go with the band. <laughs> whoa. <laughs> gotta, 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 gotta include a dick joke. I mean, it's the U.S. one. Right, There right, has right. to be a joke at some point, you Yeah, know? It's, got, it's, the, it's the Marvel jokes. And then we see kind of this moment where... You know, Dr. Stearns is like, it's her. She is the plant. You know, like, she's part of whatever's going on. I don't know what it is. And we see Jessica Hyde start to kind of torture her. And and she sticks to the script. She's, I'm from Lincoln, Nebraska. My parents are, one was this, one was that. Like, sticks to the script. And that was her downfall. She stuck to the script too much. Because then she's like... If you were a real person from Nebraska, you would have screamed as she had like cut her face and her gave her the black dahlia and the uh, eye cut and did, didn't even flinch. And she's like, well, 
I know. And then instantly, we go into John Wick 2. Everybody in Harvest from a young age is trained to be John Wick. Don't know how, but they are trained very young age. Everyone can fight like John Wick. Everyone's a badass. It's amazing. Well, I mean, we, we saw that they also apparently went through torture training because that is not natural to be able to deal with that level of pain and completely not flinch and completely remember your story and not break for a second, you know? Right. It, this is, they've got, they've got some pretty serious training camps, some pretty serious boot camps. One thing I did not like about the fight, though, is how Jessica Hyde grabs Alice's hair. Like, Alice cuts her hair back at wherever, and I'm, okay, we'll make the argument of, sure, we can't leave the hair where we were so that nobody can find us, even though we can just burn it or whatever, you know, like, and then she brings the hair into the house with her. Like, she could have left that in the car, but she... And it's still perfectly braided, and she uses that as, like, a choking device and gets her on the floor. And the U.S. Alice now has a body count as well. Yes. Which, and she, when she took the gun, there would... Whoever she took the gun from, there was zero Ian. sound. Ian, he wasn't like, no, you can't have the gun. You know, it. so in, in the, the, the UK version, when that scene happened, we saw the gun getting passed to her. Right. We knew it was a bad decision, but at the same time, they were kind of between a rock and a hard place because here they are um, having broken into this guy's house, and now there's somebody else banging at the door, and so it's like, how? what do you do in this situation? Grant makes a bad choice. He gives the gun to the girl. The girl has been told, you know, that's, it's his fault that your mom is dead. And so it's like, the tension is building. We're still surprised when the shot happens. We don't expect that. Right. But they've set it up properly. Versus, you know, in the US version, we see Ian with the gun. First, why did Jessica Hyde whole... give it to Ian? Because I feel like Wilson Wilson and Becky were all better choices. And Ian even, like, takes the gun, like, ah, ah. And we, or we're apparently with two people from Harvest, and we're just going to give the gun to Ian. Why? Why? That is... Ian. Apparently, Alice could just take the gun from him. Just, hey, Ian, give me that gun. Give me that gun. I got to shoot this. Right. Right. Fortunately, so, though... So we see... So we see... Sweet, sweet Ian with the gun, you know, not knowing what to do with it. And the whole, you know, John Wick fight happens. And uh, it seems like, um, you know, Colleen has gotten the better of Jessica Hyde. And then all of a sudden, shot. You see, it's probably a fatal shot. And then it cuts to uh, Alice holding the gun. And it's kind of like, how How did that happen? How did you get the All these grown-ups in this use the gun? room. And Alice is right. the one to take the gun and stop that, you know. It's... And they they done the they done the same kind of setup of like you know this is the person that you know it's 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 his fault, but it 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 still doesn't feel like it's quite earned, you know. Right, but I do feel like it is that U.S. version trying to you know pay the homage to the UK version. Hey, Alice killed somebody in that version. Alice is going to kill somebody in this version. We're going to see that. Um, after that, we kind of see, you know, we cut to the next scene because we're going to torture Dr. Stern. So Ian, the great babysitter he is, goes, takes Alice <laughs> and Grant upstairs while they torture Dr. Stearns. And, you know, another thing that was... It, Cool about that was that that was another homage to the uk version because ian was basically the protector of alice and grant in that episode we see you know becky's dealing with her thing in the uk version um she's going with the deals trying to figure out how to not die from deals and ian is kind of 
there with Grant and Becky, and same with the U.S. version. He's basically their babysitter while the other gang torches tortures uh, Doctor Stearns. Yeah, and then there's this. So at at this point, this is where the 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 show is really picking up its pace. You know, it, yes. it started off a little bit on the slow side, but between the the fight going on and these next few sets of scenes, we've got high energy and we've got some serious kind of stylization going on you know there's um there's this interesting dichotomy between ian is trying to comfort alice and make sure that she's okay you know you know how are you feeling checking in on her she thought she was fine when she did it but now she feels worse having done the action and and so then this kind of interesting dichotomy happens where we have um torture going on downstairs and then upstairs grant has literally jumped in in order to bring things up he jumps on the bed he starts getting goofy he gets her to smile he gets her jumping on the bed uh ian hears torturing going on which is obviously going to be upsetting so he cranks up the music and so now we've got like some good 80s music to listen to i don't know why the kids are the kids don't know what the heck this is um it's got like they, they were not it. even alive in the 80s um but still he's jumping on the bed you know they're all having fun to this they're, they're having this whole dance scene and it cuts between that and like the torture you know i thought that was kind of an interesting dichotomy going on and kind of keeping the the energy um up i didn't love the torture and i'll tell you why the, the torture was fine, you know, like, it's a very, like, interesting way to torture him. But, you know, we talked to, you know, we saw Jessica Hyde torture Colleen. She didn't react. Dr. Stearns is reacting to everything they do to him. Every little cut, he screams, he whines, he cries. You And maybe they assume he's, he saw what just happened to Colleen. Gotta keep faking it, gotta keep this going. But what I didn't like about it was how they made, as they were torturing him, they're making him look for clues. Like, you can tell he doesn't know. Like, you can tell he doesn't know anything about this this book. And they're like, look for these clues. Look for them. And then he, he finds them. Like, I felt, I feel... He it does! Just... They've had this for how long? And he finds things that they don't find. Like, who... instantly. And yo. Who, who tortures somebody over solving a puzzle like they basically brought a, a puzzle to somebody else's house and then are torturing the person is like solve the puzzle and get all the pieces together while your <laughs> hand is hurting as being like stabbed and bloody and being crushed with glass you're gonna instantly be able to find the like smallest things like to me if i was looking at that thing while I'm being tortured, it's all just going to go blurry to me. It's, I'm just like, I'm not going to see any of that. I, I, I would just be shouting out random stuff, you know, like whatever, like trying whatever to get it to comes end. to mind. Yeah, it's, it really, it should have been an interrogation. You know, it should have yes. been them asking questions about what he knows. Right. Versus like, Where's the clue? Look at the stage of the comic you've never seen. Where, the, where's like, the clue? This guy knows nothing about Utopia. Knows nothing about Dystopia, the the one before it. Nothing. Knows nothing about it. Find us the clues in this book. Find us it. Like, where Where are the clues? Point out the clues. I, I think it, he, he's a scientist. I think he barely knows anything about science. Like, there's there's a bunch of decisions he made where it's like, come on. You went to school for it, you know, so it's you're going to you're going to trust this dingus to he's, he's a lovable dingus, but still well, very lovable. He's, he's he's he was working like forced to work in the basement. Uh, he had like the farthest parking spot. I don't know if they were like assigned spaces. I don't know if you saw it was episode one or two, you know, where he, he parked in the farthest lot and there were. 50 open spaces before him. So it's like they've really shoved him into the, the, the worst situation. Um, I, I don't think that this is, is your guy, but as you pointed out, 
he finds the clues. He does. He finds them instantly. He, find, he finds Enya, and then he makes the connection of the the to to the bat thing, and he's like, "Oh wait, I I know what this is about. Stop torturing me," which is always like a go-to way to get people to be like, "Oh yeah, oh perfect." Oh. And then we see him cleaning up his wounds and That's... very even cuts all over his hand. Not not very bloody. You know, it it was uh, very... It, it just felt a little forced. A little, like, forced. We got out of this quickly. Like, let's, let's skip to the next part. Now we're all on the same team again. We see... We go to a new song. I thought this was a little bit of an interesting choice. We heard one loud song... Like while things were happening, and then we heard we go to another loud song over everything that's occurring at that moment, and we see they're all montage. Montage. We're we're cutting shower curtains. We'll and they're we'll weird s- shower curtains too. They're these aren't these aren't your normal shower curtains. Like one of them has a, a very stylized map. One of them has I don't remember. Like they're watermelon or something. It's a, Water, yeah, it's it's definitely, you can tell that they made the choice because after they're done making what they're making, it's going to make for some interesting shots. But considering the fact that everything in this home was apparent, or it seems like this home was put together by um, by Harvest, and I don't feel like those shower curtains would be in Harvest's, uh, you know, warehouse. Right. Because everything was very tactful, right, in and the ev- house that Harvest had out, and everything is those shower curtains were not tactful. They were not tactful. They they love the color choice purple. You could see lots of purple paintings, lots of purple candles, purple knickknack ch- tchotchkes. As uh, Wilson Wilson's so mad. Which another thing about that Wilson Wilson, he is so upset at this house. For all this stuff in this house, these tchotchkes, this stuff. And and I would almost understand that more from the UK Wilson Wilson. But that Wilson Wilson, he lived in a normal house that had those things. Like, he had a whole family that had these things. Like, why is he upset about it? He's just, he was just so mad. We gotta talk about the eye patch on Wilson Wilson. This is it's ridiculous. I mean, he's every episode's yeah. been a new eye patch. Every episode has been a new, different eye patch, and in this one, it's now we have decided to go from he had this like the last episode was like a nice bluish green one, not really doing much, and now he has a pink, but like sequined W on his eye patch Which, and the, considering this oh go ahead i was just saying at the at the rate of time that everything is going and everything that they're trying to do and looking at utopia it just seems like he wouldn't have time to make this bedazzled sequin eye patch with a w on it and they they had to go through this whole thing where they had to um, redo themselves so that they, you know, won't be recognized on whatever. And, I mean, already having an eye patch is, is kind of a, a memorable thing. Maybe you want to downplay that a little bit versus, you know, having right. the loudest, most obnoxious eye patch you can possibly imagine. Yes, that is basically a beacon. I am Wilson Wilson. And I... So look at me. I look at me. I make dumb jokes. (laughs) I am the joke, Wilson Wilson. I am the joke. I I am the joke, and I make jokes. And so I feel like Becky and Ian are have always been, and I think Wilson Wilson too, wearing the exact same thing since they had to change clothes. And I would even say that I feel like in the uk version they had to like change their outfits so they wouldn't be recognized but they didn't even seem to really stick to that in the uk version they kind of all just 
wearing whatever now they're not like sticking to like we have to look this way we have to really change our appearance maybe other than wilson wilson wearing his little fedora but talking about those shower curtains they make the shower curtains for they make homemade hazmat suits and uh, who knew that all you needed to make hazmat suits that you can go into a fully infectious area um, and not worry about picking up whatever it is. You need uh, shower curtains. You need um, duct tape for the seams. Obviously, that's impervious. Um, I, like a Maybe like a clear soda bottle container was my guess for like the face mask. Like a two-liter bottle? You know, it was bottle. definitely like some kind of like clear plastic... For like the face mask, which obviously is also probably ducked. It. Yes, two Red Bulls, right here. Two Red Bulls, which that's the... there was because I, don't know. I I I think on a gas mask like that actually serves a purpose. Like I think there's there's stuff in there that mm -hmm. filter, so it's like so the the air can come in and it it filters. Um, it's not just there for looks. Like, I don't think you, you can just, you know, just put, you know, two soda cans and duct tape them and be like, I mean, it, it looks like a gas mask. So maybe I'm the sure virus they had something in it's there. It's a gas mask. I'm sure it's they... like, it's like the five second rule. You know how it's like right. when you drop something on the floor, like bacteria respect that. Like they, you can, wait, 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 you can wait, wait. see that like they, they all, they all jump forward, but they're like, their hands are out. They're like. Not, not yet, not we yet. Have to count five, five, four, three, and then the person gets it and they're like, go. I did think it was funny that there was actually a lot of product placement in this US version. I don't know if you noticed it. There we talked about there was the Red Bull. We had they talked about Pepsi, Pepsi. and Toblerone. Yes. So I Which I, they just um they're they're getting sued again for uh, their use of the mountain. That's a side note, but that's yes, that's a different product podcast. Placement. I just thought that was funny that the U.S. has a lot of product placements, and I I don't know if I'd noticed it in other episodes, but in this episode, I definitely noticed a lot of product placement. And I was just like, huh, that's okay. I didn't really think of it with the the Toblerone. Um, the, the the Red Bull definitely was like kind of in your face to have that be, you know, the, the breathing parts. And the Pepsi um, one, have you ever had Pepsi? <laughs> have you ever had the yes. Which is a real thing that humans say. <laughs> yes, right? That's what everybody <laughs> um, says. That's uh so so things are, are moving along. We're having this, you know, fun music montage as we're putting together, you know, as they're putting together their own um hazmat suits. Um, because, you know, he's pointed out, Dr. Mike Stearns has pointed out that it is the rabbit farm or what, a uh, petting zoo, petting zoo, rabbit yeah. petting zoo, the that's, traveling, that's spreading zoo. it, traveling rabbit petting zoo, um, is, is where it is. And so they go there with their hazmat suits to do some murdering. Um, they show up, the suits look as ridiculous as they sound. You know, with these crazy shower curtains. Um, Which only two shower curtains make four suits, by the way. Yes, four adult suits. Four adult, grown adult suits. I don't know if you've seen any shower curtains. I don't think two of them could make full front and back four. But that that's okay. Yes. And that's a top and bottom, too, because the, the pants were full body shower curtain pants and they they even had like the 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 shoe covers like they it was these were legitimate put together with duct tape so obviously airtight clearly yeah um duct tape doesn't lose know. stickiness ever they and yeah especially on a fabric that is moving duct tape is usually really good at holding everything out completely yeah, yeah. So so they go into to the tents, shots fired. Um, they, you know, kill the rabbits first and then burn everything down. Um, it turns out that they do leave with one. 
in a bag. Um, so they're they're driving away with it. You know, so we've had this kind of like high energy thing. And as they're in transit and somebody asks, you know, if it's alive, if it's still alive because it's in a bag, you know, obviously that's not great for breathing. Um, somehow Jessica Hyde gets bit by the rabbit through the plastic because I think that's a thing that rabbits do. Um, and it draws blood. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I was very frustrated with that scene. Like, one, you just have to flick the bag, see if the rabbit's moving. She sticks her finger <laughs> in it. The rabbit's gonna... It essentially bites her, meaning it bit through the plastic, meaning that yep. if that rabbit is infected, which we find out it is, all of that infection is going into the car anyway. You know, even... Yeah, like, is it is it airborne? Is it, you know, via bite? Like, how... It... I would assume it's airborne because the kids that are getting the amount of kids that have been infected are not not all of them are going to get bit by a rabbit at a petting zoo. Also, <laughs> yeah, the, why are we having that, rabbits that, that bite <laughs> at a petting zoo? Why is this rabbit a biting rabbit at a petting zoo? That makes no sense. <laughs> Bad rabbit. No biting. No biting hair E. Truman. The little... <laughs> uh. Uh. So we get yeah, the rabbit. It it just it just didn't make sense. We get the rabbit. We get the rabbit. Take the rabbit back to Doctor Stern's lab. Park fifty miles away. Walk him in. We have Doctor Stern's doing a, a test on the rabbit, and we we have kind of a nice moment with Becky and Jessica Hyde. Kind of bring it down. We really do, you know. And so I I wanted to to briefly talk about the composition of this shot because. It, it shows that, for me, oftentimes, the U.S. version has all the right ingredients, but they just don't quite nail the execution, because this is a scene that I feel really had the chance to have a lot of impact. And they chose the shot well. It is it is a, a beautiful shot. They're in um, a hallway. It's pulled out. You really see the emptiness of that hallway. The two of them are on the bench together, so they are right in the center of the shot. Um, Jessica Hyde is asking questions about death. This is kind of surprising for somebody who's been through such a harrowing situation. And, and Becky can tell that she's somewhat vulnerable and actually scoots closer to her. So the, the composition of the scene really, really points out how close these two are together and how there's nothing else around you know it's like these people are all that they that that each other have um and it's it's tough going through existential thought i mean i i remember when i was much younger you know thinking about life and and death and and what happens and like is that scary and it it was i i thought and so seeing her go through this i felt like they had all of the right ingredients but it just didn't, the, the writing didn't quite take it there. Right. The acting didn't quite take it there. I think that it's, a, the one of the biggest problems is that we, you know, we've seen Jessica Hyde kind of do these nice things, but then she always kind of like goes back on them. You know, we see her be nice to Grant and then we see her be mean to Grant. We see her be nice to Alice. We see her be mean to Alice. And we see, like, we get it. She's raised from this terrible thing but we the last time the last interaction that we saw alice or becky and jessica hyde have was becky dying getting a tracheotomy essentially from this giant funnel and yep. which we don't even talk about and she's talking fine again her vocal cords are fine doesn't even have a hole in her throat anymore Thank God. I literally forgot about this. I know. I was thinking about this. I was like, huh. I think the writers literally forgot about it. It's a, I think these were the writers for Game of Thrones season eight. Well, Danny just kind of forgot, you know, forgot she hurt her throat. And so I feel like that's the problem is that we didn't, we didn't see these characters start becoming friends. And it's kind of hard when you're like on the second to last episode of this show and you're just supposed to expect like 
now Jessica Hyde, who's been afraid of, you know, running for her life for her whole life, essentially, gets bit by a rabbit and is now faced with mortality. And n- now we feel bad for her. Like this girl's right talking about like, I can't have sex because I don't want to be attacked or, you know, I don't want to be murdered by these guys, you know, in this moment. And I think that it's right. it, like the, the scene was a beautiful scene. We see Becky be nice, give her a Toblerone, you know, peace. And it just, it falls flat because we, I don't feel like we built to that moment. Yeah. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. Do we have anything else going on with the, the, the U.S. gang or on to U.K.? Well, we do have a little bit with the U.S., uh, I would okay. say we find out that Enya is Milner. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, we find Enya is Milner. So we we figure out the rabbit is carrying this virus, but it's not the virus that Dr. Stern we knows. Sorry, we, we, we knew that Enya was Milner because Milner had said that that was uh, her cosplay name. We found out that Enya is the blue fairy. Right. Ipso facto... Milner is the Blue Fairy. Ipso facto, Milner is the Blue Fairy, which also I feel like, you know, so we so we have, we find out that the, the disease is not in this rabbit. So Wilson Wilson and Jessica Hyde go talk to Milner. Both people have not met Milner before, confront her. And I don't understand how Wilson Wilson just figures out that there's something supposed to be in this virus. Like there's something different in this virus. Like we already know this virus has the T-rash properties or whatever, but he's, he's talking about that there's something in it. And I think, you know, him just figuring this out, that there's something in it, this vaccine, especially the vaccine, which they go to Milner and they're like, there's something in this vaccine there has to be there's no way that there's not and she's like well the fda approved it so and i think we actually know what's in the the vaccine be due to the uk version uh we did hear a little bit more of that we will come back to that but we see jessica hyde talking to milner we see wilson wilson talking to milner and we find out that jessica hyde's dad was working with homeland and Mr. Rabbit captures Jessica Hyde's dad, captures Jessica Hyde, which they talk about this baby blanket. Now, is Milner... Which conveniently is within arm's reach. She doesn't even need to... Right here. Right, I don't even have to move my feet. It's been 15 years, and I keep it right it's here been... at all times. <laughs> right. <laughs> We're now... Were they implying, or am I speculating wildly, that Milner is her mother? Uh, I didn't catch that. So... I felt like Milner was very upset, and it seemed like maybe they were just working together, but Milner seemed very attached to Jessica Hyde. Not this version of Jessica Hyde. Like, the baby blanket carrying Jessica Hyde. It made me kind of wonder if Milner is her mom. I could see that being revealed later. She didn't seem that concerned when they were leaving because Milner wasn't going to help. And I was really frustrated. Not that Milner wasn't going to help, but that the gang was being really dumb with the information that they were giving her. So they were talking about the conspiracy part of it, you know, um, we think that this vaccine has something in it. We think that Dr. Kevin Christie is Mr. Rabbit. So you should stop, you know, production of this. And she's like, the FDA approved it. And I, I, you know, just met with Dr. Christie. Like he's a, he's he's a nice guy. guy. Yeah. It's, it's definitely not him. It's like, okay, rather than focusing on the speculation, why don't we talk about the facts? Because something that is very interesting is that um, the virus that uh, that was discovered in this rabbit is not the same virus that this vaccine is supposed to be treating. 
So even if the vaccine is perfectly fine and perfectly safe, it would not be treating this virus and it doesn't make no doctor is going to put something in your body if you don't need it you know so like even if it is a good vaccine that will treat the the peruvian virus or the, whatever the dr stern's virus you know it's not going to treat this one so it's like g give her the evidence that you have here right. is the lab report like it's it is a completely different virus that we have found in this um you know in this rabbit let's look into that and let's pause production on the vaccine for that reason because we don't think it will be effective right uh let's not forget that it's literally only been tried on one human and this wasn't a proper clinical trial like in a situation where she was being observed right which you know so and and so, so then milner because she's only getting fed the kind of like the the speculation where you know very far apart dots have to be connected she's like i don't i don't buy it right not gonna help tough titties right which in contrast with the other milner we see that the other milner we, so you know we speculated that last week we thought that milner could have been mr rabbit we now know for a fact that we were we kind of we see why we thought that right so we see the uk milner actually did plant a bug on them that the group the called the network was basically already knows where they've known where the gang is for most of the time for... they're just waiting for the gang to have the manuscript so they can get the manuscript they don't care about the gang right. they want the manuscript right and so we we find out Milner was actually working with them. She's working for them, but she's working against them in a way. She really did want to help the gang out. And a lot of the motivation for the UK Milner is we see her son is suffering from deals. Basically what Becky has uh, suffering deals. badly he's got weeks left he's on his he's way out literally on his deathbed and um it's it was a, a sad and beautifully done scene you know dim red lighting the um the bed right there in the center there was this kind of haunting quiet organ pipe music playing mm -hmm. And the the, Very the music somber. often, yes, yeah, it was it was in a minor key, and oftentimes would have that dissonance, you know. So you feel kind of like uncomfortable with those notes that don't quite vibrate naturally right. together, you know. That just like forcing you to want to wait for them to resolve it, you know, to resolve the chord to something that doesn't kind of have that dissonance. It was, um it was sad and beautiful at the same time you know it, it it like you said it was somber it was beautifully shot very beautiful in the beginning of the uk episode we have been seeing becky has been freaking out about this medicine that's been kind of keeping the deals at bay we see that she's been getting the supply from the shady doctor guy the shady guy and either she's been trading favors for him so that she could get the this medicine and now we see becky s seeing somebody that's dying from deals and i think that this brings her reality you know she knows her dad died from it her dad probably passed it on to her and i don't know if we know if becky's actually felt anything from it in the u.s or the uk version we just know that she's been trying to prevent it you know i feel like we have a very good moment when the gang that group the uk version is interrogating their hostage yeah uh well i'm i'm not i'm not quite ready for 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 that but when um <clears throat> when she's talking with um donaldson it's it's interesting the kind of 
seeds that that he's sowing you know like she she so in in that interrogation you know ian at one point kind of agrees with um and we'll get to the interrogation in a moment but like agrees with the the views of 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 uh let's you know when when he realizes like this plan going on and he actually verbally says it the other two are like no Wait, not that's okay the, that's the interrogation i was talking about that's the inter yes but uh, sorry i i just i have a, a few dots i'm kind of connecting um she uh she has another meeting with donaldson and and donaldson is like i'm gonna bring everything i have as far as your medicine tomorrow and either you give me what i want or it goes in the lake you know and you're basically screwed and at first she she puts her foot down and when he says like i'm bringing it all tomorrow she doesn't say no right so you can see that she's in this very uncomfortable situation but i okay. just wanted to yes so let's I, I, I want to go to that that like full thread of like seeing what she's struggling with and right. where it takes her and the fact that i don't think she's committed one way or another but she's in a very difficult situation and she has her own personal reasons for what she might choose to do. Right. And what Donaldson wants is so D Donaldson, he's been working with the network as well. He is looking for the manuscript. He asks Becky for the manuscript so that he can give the manuscript to the network and get a huge payday from them. And he basically says, bring me the manuscript or you don't get i'll bring every cure i have or not cure but every uh medicine to yep. keep you that would keep you for years without ever having to worry about deals bring me the manuscript or it's all getting thrown in the river and go yourself you know and and the the interesting thing is at one point we even see his humanity and it totally makes sense because at first oh. you know he seems oh. like he could be your camera blinked out you're good now it um you know at one point it seems like he could be comically evil where he you know is just kind of a, a bad guy and and there's no real reason behind it um but then we actually see like he explains and it totally makes sense that if well if so let's so let's go back to the interrogation yeah. Let's I go think, back to the interrogation. So I think because this has an important reason of what his motivation for wanting Utopia is. Because he knows what the network oh, yeah. is after. So the he network... Knows. So What's we, the network after? So we have the interrogation. We have this guy that we think might be Mr. Rabbit. But it is Let's. He is another doctor. The creator of deals, actually. And he has been working on a lot of these things. He has a, a red ledger, some would say, uh, a pretty tainted past. And we've he's fought... pained by it. Oh, yeah. You can tell that this man is not happy with what he has had to do for what he thinks is the betterment of humanity. Yeah, and... he's still driven by his convictions. He still feels that what they're moving towards is correct right but he is hurt by what he's had to do in the past right and it, it seems like he might have to do things like that again like he's aware that that's part of the the choice he's made it's it's interesting seeing him as this kind of tortured person who is right doing what he feels is right and doing a lot of wrong things wrong to other people right for big picture you know Right. And so we find out because he had a case of the Russian flu vaccine on him that the gang is a hold of. Let's kind of lets them know, hey, you've been tracked this whole time. That's how we knew that Milner was gave them the, the chip. You've been tracked this whole time. We've been we known where you were. We're just waiting for the manuscript. And now, yeah, that... Wilson Wilson is pissed and he's like, you're trying to you're trying to kill these people. You're trying to kill these people. You're trying to kill. And like, Let's is pretty calm about explaining and yeah. then like just letting it all out. Well, because he, 
it all out. He lets go. <laughs> he lets go. <laughs> and, and I think part of the the motivation for Let's of why he was willing to let everything go is that he realizes that they're not coming to save him. They're not going to come help him. The rest of the network. They know where he is. They could easily break him out of there. And he realizes they're not going to come for him. And he kind of takes this moment to let us know what's going on. And we find out that this vaccine mixed with this virus, though not harmful separate when they are mixed together will make basically majority of the population infertile and so only one in 20 will be fertile and the whole motivation behind this is we don't have enough resources he says when he was born there was five billion people on the planet or four billion or something like that and we're at seven eight billion now and or is that correct or are we at more now something like that something like that and he's saying that by this year we're we would be at a crazy amount and you see how people are how we share resources now you think when things get dire and and terrible that we're gonna share resources later and so the whole motivation behind the network is kind of like you know we in early we thought that it was to it was going to be like a genocide like uh yeah it's going to take out people and he's like no we don't care about that like we're not being indiscriminate it is just nobody dies yeah nobody dies it's just we are going to make people not fertile anymore to slow down the reproduction on this planet to hopefully in such and such years that it'll plateau at 500 million or so and then once it's at 500 million for like 100 years then it's gonna then it'll probably kick the rate the fertile rates back in very crazy stuff yeah and and the and the only reason that people are dying from the virus is because they're not jessica hyde's dad they don't they don't quite have the brains that he does to be able to make this so they're testing it out the hard way right. to finally find that right iteration of what this virus needs to be to not be deadly to not hurt people but to be there so that when it's mixed with the vaccine it does this other stuff and that's why they want the manuscripts because with the manuscript they will have the information that they need to make the virus that they need to be able to do this safely correct and so we see you know becky and ian go talk to milner they take allison grant wilson decides to stay back to get the information out of him who is mr rabbit and we see what do we see wilson wilson do oh this this was good wilson wilson so we're we're getting into some some interesting stuff and i already kind of mentioned this with what's going on with Becky, that she's having her own kind of issues that she's dealing with. Um, Becky, Ian, Wilson, Wilson, they have a talk after, you know, talking with Let's and Wilson, Wilson, and, you know, says maybe he's right. And they're like, no, no, that's not the case. Um, they have to go and deal with separate things. Just something I really like with the UK one versus always scooby doing it and always finding stuff pretty quickly in the us one you know it's yeah. like look at yeah. i'm gonna torch you while you look at this comic oh i already found something <laughs> okay torch you done um so they they have to they have to split up they have to deal with different things and they decide to leave uh wilson wilson at the at the old house to to deal with let's to find out where who Mr. Rabbit is or where who Mr. Mis Rabbit is? Who Mr. Rabbit is. Because they still have Mr. no Rabbit idea is. who Mr. Rabbit is. And Wilson Wilson is going to get it out of him. Beautiful. Beautiful shot composition. We start off 
we're looking at Wilson Wilson and we we can we can see him we can see you know his his hat his eye patch he's looking off in the distance um, but we don't know what he's looking at and we don't know what he's thinking about the camera kind of turns a little bit so that we can see a little bit more of him and then it cuts to behind him so that we can see that he's he was so well lit because he's against the window he's looking out this is where you can see that he's being pensive he's thinking you know that's that's why and it's it's a great shot because he's against a strong light so you just kind of see his silhouette against that well well lit light um and then he i don't remember exactly what he does but it, there there's a motion he makes that makes it clear like yeah so my first thought process i'm thinking to myself this is wilson wilson's chance for revenge he's going to he walks in you know to the room he has a bag like a bit that's like, yeah so he's he's clearly made the decision so this is what i was talking about with with the with the shots because in that bag while the color isn't reminiscent the shape is reminiscent of arby's torture bag right the yellow torture bag like long duffel bag with the big handles he walks in there purposefully with that and it's great because like it the the way he opens the door so it's like you see the 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 prisoner the way he walks in with that bag with like conviction puts it down um revenge time yeah let starts begging he absolutely starts begging he knows that this is it for him and wilson wilson cuts his cord it is brilliant because it is both surprising and well set up so that you're not it's not like it doesn't make sense right you see that he is struggling with this thoughts like he he did he did say something earlier about you know like that's why that's that's why my dad died and that's why this happened to my eye but he's also kind of agreeing that we humanity does need to be reduced and this is the non-lethal way of doing it you know right so it's so good because it it gets you ready for him having that revenge it does such good setup and then when it goes a completely different direction it still makes sense and you're like I buy it. I totally yeah. buy it. Beautifully yeah. done. It was it was gorgeous. I you know loved every moment of it, and he even tells him he's like, "I'll make it look like you escaped." And he, Sabuku! right in the stomach, which he doesn't know when anybody's coming back. Right. <laughs> like hopefully he doesn't just bleed out there. But I think I think he maybe felt like he was at a point that you know he's lost his family he's got one eye you know this is a good chance to like help humanity in a non-lethal way curb its its population and you know i feel like he was like you know if i end up dying from this i you know at least i i helped i pushed humanity forward in a way so the the interesting thing and i didn't quite want to to say it is that going back to the u.s version um as the the gang is um making their hazmat suits and then wilson wilson randomly goes on his rant about consumerism and having buying stuff that you don't need i I see a parallel between those two Wilson Wilsons. Like that's that's the same issue that the UK Wilson Wilson kind of ends up agreeing with is that like yes, we're, you know, we just we keep multiplying, we keep buying things, we keep, you know, he's he's not your your kind of average typical person, which is why he understands what, you know, what this organization is doing, you know, what the network is doing. Um and it's it's done in a much more subtle way 
there versus for me the rant in the middle of the the u.s one kind of slowed down a scene where we actually have some good pacing and then all of a sudden we have to have this rant happen and i was wondering if they're possibly setting up something similar for maybe the last episode of the u.s one where you see that because wilson wilson has some of these you know kind of like anti-normal person thoughts right that that's why he ends up siding with um you know with the other group but i just it, it killed the pacing for me a little bit and it just it was silly and it didn't make sense well, and what's also silly and doesn't make sense is that Wilson Wilson in the U.S. version has kind of figured out that there's something different in the vaccine that's going to be released and and do so. Like they, like in his like mind, he talks to Milner about like, oh, there's something in there that's going to be different that's going to completely change everything. And I think that they're setting up that it's going to be the infertile thing. And I think that we will see, because Wilson Wilson, you know, we we tortured it out of Let's in a way, where Let's is thinking he's going to die, so he just comes clean about everything. And then Wilson Wilson, in the US version, just figures out that there's something in there. You know, like Dr. Stern says, though, this isn't my virus. And he's like, clearly there's something in the vaccine that has to be, you know, like, it just it it doesn't make sense that he would know that right i think we've maxed out on the gang a little bit about everything last thing that i want to kind of uh put a bow on it is just is is just that um and and we'll also kind of see this with with jessica hyde a little bit as we start talking about her and rb later on but um, the interesting thing that the UK one is doing with the end of most of the character arcs is they're giving people personal problems that they're dealing with that might make them make decisions that could be against the benefit of the group. Right. And they're sewing that really well. Yes. You know? Yes. And And so, like, we're seeing cracks in the group and we totally understand why they're there it is it is well developed i i I love how they're doing it versus like once again us always together do we do it you know i agree um i i like all these like visions and cracks that that we're seeing in the the us group and it it really ends up making you wonder like what's gonna happen like who's going to do what and why right and and, and I the could motivations see are clear. anybody yes and I, I could see any one of these guys throwing a wrench into their own group right as wilson wilson did so, yes and the u.s version i don't see that and i think you know we will see wilson wilson maybe, maybe yeah maybe do a switcheroo and i think that is not gonna feel earned in the next episode but we will see we'll see one thing i want to talk about i so i want to get into the rb jessica hyde stuff in the uk one first i want to talk about lily rb and dr christie okay yep. in the u.s version yep. so you know rb goes back talks to dr christie it seems like water under the bridge you know like rb is back to kind of being yes and no but also um the the door is locked and dr christie makes him put the gun on the ground makes him do a full turn pull out the bulge in his back pocket which is of course one of his geodes geodes you know which so he's great call back to the uk one which we will get to yeah why 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 he likes the geodes when we'll get to that Yep, yep, yep. Um, so, I mean, he's you, you don't see him, like, trembling or anything like right. that, but he is covering his bases. Um, Dr. Christie doesn't, doesn't trust quite... Arby, but I would say Arby does seem like he is back to being okay with kind of what happened to him. Yeah. 
Which, considering all of these people have been, like, trained as assassins, I don't know why you would still feel safe. Like, he could pick up anything in your office, and it would be a weapon. He's Based John off the fight scenes we've seen, yeah, he's, he's John Wick. Like, and he doesn't he... need a gun. But also, he uh, that's, that guy's outside with the door open, and he walked in a foot. He... Ha! <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean... It was. It, it, it doesn't. It doesn't quite make sense, but I, I I see what they're doing. You know, like they they're they're showing that while for the most part, Doctor Kevin Christie trusts RB, it is with limitations. You right. know, right. And so we see Doctor Christie first time we see him upset because Lily's going off script. She is kind of doing. He her is own going thing. off script. Oh yeah, she's going off script. He's not a fan, and he sends RB to her and says. I trust you'll take care of this. We. S- and it wasn't just that; it was something like I, I, I trust your your decision or something like that. Yeah. It was. It was basically. It. It wasn't like the one time where he's like, you know, do it humanely. Do you know what humane is? Right. This was like. Take care of this. I dealer's trust your- dealer's choice. <laughs> yeah. However you want to do it, and you know, we get our other product placement. So Arby goes talks to Lily. Uh, Pepsi. Have you ever tried Pepsi? She's really trying. Like we see this Lily that has been raised in home, and very much like, hey, you know, things are different. I got to try other food. I got to, you know, you've never tried Pepsi. She's got all these sweets out in front of him. She's talking to Arby. Like she's n- known Arby his whole or her whole life. And she basically is talking to him and saying, like, you know, maybe there is more than home. You know, maybe there's more to life than just home. And we kind of see that we still don't know where Arby's feeling about this. We see that Arby takes her to home. And I don't know if you noticed this. Where Arby takes her is where Arby was picked up. By the guy in the car. Oh, uh, that makes sense. Yeah. Because there was like that, there's like this wooded area and there's the rope. They ring the bell. That is right yeah. where Arby was standing when the car came and got him. He had just left home when they come and got him. That's and, clever. And then we, we see that she goes in. She talks to Dr. Christie. And we have this conversation first off i also noticed you know running down the alice in wonderland threads yeah while they're in the gazebo in front of them there's a teapot like the tea party oh yeah i don't know if it has anything to do with anything but i did like this conversation i i didn't and did like this conversation We kind of find out what home is about. We've raised this group of people that no sexism, no racism, everybody's equal, except they're not equal. We tortured Arby as a kid. Jessica Hyde got special treatment. Thomas gets special treatment. Not very equal. He claims it's equal. It's it's this equal place, but it, it isn't. Clearly. Yeah, he, he claims uh, that the the goal is to raise kids to be how humans should be, but that's clearly not the case with Arby. I don't know if he's the, the special... I mean, he did also say that, you know, only a few special kids get special purposes. So maybe, you know, maybe everyone is equal except for the people that are special, and they're more equal than the others. They're more equal than the others. um so not a lot happens here we get she gets dr christie gets lily under control they go into a news interview here's another interesting thing that i noticed the news interview that keeps interviewing them is bsn and i'm wondering if that's supposed to stand for like bullshit news (laughs) bs news like just a bunch of bullshit news that's i i've seen bsn a lot for the news stations and it made me think of i wonder if it's just like 
bullshit news. Don't know. Fun speculation. I mean, may, maybe they, or it could also just be that they were going through like, there's not a lot of three letter acronyms. Right. And there's not a ton of them that haven't been taken. So it's like, what's the list of what's what's available, you know? I still thought um, it was funny. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, it, it definitely was, was, was interesting. And it was it was interesting that the the narrative that they're painting now is also kind of weird. You know, um, I'm the guy that owns a company, you know, Dr. Kevin Christie. I'm the guy that owns a company that... Uh, is making this vaccine and I have adopted into my family, you know, the one person that took the, the vaccine and survived that has gone through very publicly this weird story of, you know, surviving and then finding out that, you know, her dad is inappropriate to, you know, I'm, I'm taking her in, you know, and I'm, I'm sure there's not paperwork you have to do for that i'm sure that that's not going to raise any questions eyebrows and he brushes it off by saying i'm sure you'll be respectful of her privacy as she's going through this tough time right and we but. see that the news anchor wants to ask her a little bit more questions and christy's now got her on the leash she's not going to say anything take her away more importantly i want to talk about arby and jessica hyde in the uk version yeah boy did we see some things did we learn some things wow so we see you know first they don't really trust each other jessica hyde and him go to this diner out of the middle of nowhere that arby claims that he's a regular at and we see two... well before that he's he's um he's locked up and we have your dream well not your dream but Right. You want to talk about the dream. Right, right, right. The the dream, we see Arby is locked up. She doesn't trust him. He's supposed to take her. She, he is supposed to take her to Utopia. And yep. she doesn't trust him. He's locked up. She has a dream. We see a younger man, definitely not Jessica Hyde's father, being tortured and... It, the dream scene was so cool in my mind because it was like a psychedelic trip. You could see the tree was waving like this, the splintered broken tree was just waving like clearly a dream lucid state that she was in. And we see this young girl looking at this we don't know it's a dream at first it's just this kind of trippy thing and we see this young girl scream as she's seen this someone getting tortured and she wakes yeah, up and, and going to like that that trippiness the you know it, it's it's not instantly apparent but you you pick up on things as you you know kind of see what you're describing but also like as you see the two people that are torturing the man the, the closer we get on them, the more we see that they're faceless. So at first, it, it could just be like two normal guys, but then all of a sudden you're like, "Oh, they're they're missing a face. Like this is trippy. This is some weird stuff." Very much feels like an acid trip, not like a recollection of a memory, but something more. And we find out it's a dream. She wakes up from a dream, and in a panic, we find out the young girl is Jessica Hyde, and she's panicked by it, and. We'll come back to that in a minute. She, her and Arby go off, pull at the side of the road. He's like, we got to go in here. You can trust me. And, you know, we can't go in there handcuffed. We have to be free. And they're, you know, he's talking about being at home together. They're eating food. Very, very different from the Arby in the U.S. version. Because U.S. Arby has, seems like all he eats is chocolate covered raisins. He's never had any other food outside of that. Where this RB, he's this regular at this diner. He tells Jessica Hyde, hey, you you came from where I came from. You know that you need to eat and keep your strength up. And she doesn't really trust him. You know, she's like, this is trash food. You know, poor RB. He's like, my tummy hurts. I got to go to the bathroom. 
And I think this was a little bit of an homage too of like Jessica Hyde, you know, when they would go to the bathroom in the the first one where she'd make, you know, every time she'd have to follow them or, you know, little homage. Poor Arby, he's just a little fat belly sticking out, goes in, he's like, I'm, I'm sorry for the smell. <laughs> like, just, yep. Might smell, you might hear some noises. Very, very awkward scene, but important. We... Then but dro- but not not awkward in a bad way like the oh yeah like the U.S. ping one like it, it it's it's good awkward right it was very it, well done it, it you know it was like it, we didn't see anybody standing up peeing we just we saw this Arby just trying to he just had a big breakfast and I got to take care of, probably had some coffee you know I know after when it, I drink coffee sometimes you gotta go and uh, we see that. After that, they go to the tree, the tree where the dream was. And we find out that Jessica Hyde recollects that it is where they tortured Christos. Christophs? What's, uh, I forget his name. I think it's... It's like Cor- Corvat Christophs or something. I don't remember yeah. exactly. And which, that was the guy that was her protector from episode two we found out that jessica hyde was being protected by this man and so we see that she saw a, him getting tortured there and the gut punches that we find out that a 15 year old arby was the one that was doing it that was torturing him and he explains in graphic detail that he put his hand inside him and pulled out basically his heart is what I'm assuming. Yeah. He's like, he reached in, pulled it out. And I feel like you can kind of feel a little regret for our, from Arby a little bit. Like he regretted doing it. It It's interesting because he, he goes into detail, but it's not... He's not taking any pleasure in it. No. He's also not necessarily showing regret. It's it, he he doesn't have a lot of emotion. He doesn't have a wide range, you know. Yes. And so I I think that he, this is his chance to explain things, and he's being thorough about it. And that right. means including details. And it's 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 quiet the way he describes it, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting to contrast that with what he's saying. Right. You know, his kind of quiet demeanor of explaining it, of explaining it. And one thing I forgot to mention it, when they were in the diner, he said something that we heard in the U S version. Yes. He says, well, I feel like little boys are meant to be loved. You know, like little kids should have love. Like, yes. And it, it's this, you know, he's coming to the realization that he, like, nobody directly tells him in the UK version that he was not loved. The US one, it was like, we withheld love from you to make you who you were. And nobody tells the UK RB that, but the UK RB is like, every kid should have love kind of thing. And he... yeah. I think that's kind of this this process of of getting him to where he's he's at essentially. And he tells Jessica Hyde, he says, "I will take you to Utopia, but I'm not going to do it while the gun is being pointed at me." And Jessica Hyde throws the gun and says, "I don't need a gun to kill you." She's pissed. pissed. She makes it clear like I can I can kill you regardless, and right. I am going to kill. Like you're once you're dead. done explaining, I'm still going to. But it's it's interesting, you know. To to some extent, this is like a a trust thing, you know. Right. Arby set this up as like, I'm I'm on your side at this point. Right. I'm going to give you all the answers, but there has to be a certain level of trust to and this. Then, and then we get to a beautiful scene beautiful scene loved it this is another one great 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 composition um we've got some some high-paced music which makes no sense with 
what's going on because they're in a car. Um, it's we're we're looking from the back seat through the front windshield. So we see the two of them in front of us. We can see through the windshield to the building that's on the opposite street corner. Um, and the, the, the conversation is, I, I don't know about where he hid the, um, well, he says that's where, where he the, hid the manuscript. He says, that's where he lived. Like, this is where I, they kept me. This is where I, my home, uh, this is like the cell that I was kept in. This is where I hid the manuscript. It's, it's not a fast paced conversation. It's not an exciting conversation by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but the music is fast paced, letting us know that like something is going on, right? right. You know, those two are in sharp focus, but for whatever reason, um, they're letting distracting things enter the shot, you know? So across the, across the street at the opposite corner, there's a, a person and th th all of this is out of focus, but you can see it through the windshield and the fact that there's not motion going on between the two of them as they're talking means that what's in the center is going to kind of draw your attention, even though it's it's blurred for whatever reason, you know? Right. There's a random person walking on the street, random car comes, stops near the person. The person has kind of passed the car a little bit. The person comes back to the car. So now it's like car and person. And then all of a sudden, RB asks if she's wearing her seatbelt. And then he floors it. And just floors it into that car and then gets out, shoots the guy in the car, shoots the person on the ground that got hit by the, the, the car. But where did he get the gun? Yes. <laughs> and the brilliant setup. And, and, and so they, they explain that in that awkward bathroom scene, he had set the gun there. That's where he got the gun. He was a regular it's, there. It's, so it's, good. it's brilliant and it just like has you you know that something is coming and so it's you can't quite put all the pieces together and then it just happens and it's 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 beautiful and yeah and i you know he shoots bam shoots the girl shoots the guy other gun jessica high grabs the gun and he's basically like look that's gonna buy us some time but we gotta go and he yeah. just, they floor it in there. I thought this whole scene was great. You know, light and fires, right. light and fires, boom, boom, boom. Not uh, just lighting fires. Stuff was already piled up. Yes. Which means he'd already planned to burn this place down. He already has it set up. So he's efficient. Once he's in there, he can, in minimal amount of time, get it burning. Also, like he knows that there is not time for this. The whole time he's running, like... He's such a badass, even though he's not John Wick like the other RB, but he goes, as he's going, <laughs> he's got his limp and <laughs> his asthma, just his limp, his everything. Asthma, yes. He lights the fires. He is, he's set. He's on a mission. He knows what the plan is. He knows where he's going. And he says, this will, they'll catch up to us. We got to go. And they get to his room. And... God, this scene, so many beautiful things about this scene. So many. Uh, they'd, they'd referenced earlier um, that as a kid, he drew by the vents. And this is just like a dirty, tiny, it's like a cell. It really is like a jail cell. Unlike the, the US version where it looks like a tiny person's weird room, you know? This looks like a, kind of like a jail cell. It is gross. It's dirty. Um, there's the, the drawings by the vents on the floor, which is kind of sad. Um, at one point, we actually view part of the scene from, I don't know if it was a dirty mirror or if it was a dirty window that is like mm -hmm. to another room. And, and so we're seeing through this like really obscured lens. Like it's really showing how filthy and dilapidated and sad and empty and just this terrible life that he has had and he sees this rock he has this rock 
and I forget what kind of rock it is, and he explains that this is one of the oldest rocks in existence, and kind of why his life doesn't matter, and why everything doesn't matter, and like why he kind of did the things he did was that this rock will still be here when he's gone. Like, we're just a blink of an eye. And the rock is like an homage to the geodes that, you know, he has this rock that he's very passionate about. He, he has a very, it's like one thing that we've seen him care about seems like this rock. And it's, he cares about this rock because it's been here longer than we have and we are just a blink of an eye in this rock's eyes, essentially. And Jessica Hyde has the other half, or a matching rock. Crazy. Beautiful. Beautiful. And we find out... That, okay, the beautiful part of this scene. When... They first met Jessica Hyde and Arby, and Arby takes Utopia from her. Jessica Hyde turns her back to him, kind of expecting to be shot by him. In this one, when he gives her Utopia, Arby has his back to her, expecting to be killed by Jessica Hyde beautiful scenes when they took utopia from each other both of them have their backs to each other and then we find out in this one at least they are brother and sister wasn't that one of your early theories uh i did think that arby and him and her were brother and sister i also thought that jessica hyde was brother and sister with grant so, doesn't matter. Let's doesn't put this matter. one on okay. the scoreboard. Scoreboard. Bear, 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 bear. I get one. Yay. <laughs> but yes, Jessica yeah. Hyde and Arby are in fact brother and sister in this one. And, you know, he... I think that Jessica Hyde kind of looks at her dad in a, in a higher light. And I think that Arby kind of recognizes the monster that he was in the uk version and beautiful scene i loved it she ends up not killing rb i think that in that moment he earned all that trust maybe right. not earned the trust but just earned respect at least and man that scene was great i loved it Loved it all. Well, Absolutely great. Uh, so this this secret organization with uh, Let's Jeff and some other guy um, in the UK version. Something I thought was really interesting. The man with a really thin yes, little the thing white, right here. The white right? man. He's he seemed very much like he's not at the top in the past because right. you know at one point he told let's like you have to you have to make that decision or something like that you know so it made it seem like you're was... you're over top of me right um but when let's goes missing the guy's like yeah it's not a big not a big deal right um at one point uh this guy tells jeff something and jeff is like you know kind of saying like don't tell me what to do you know right and it's it it, it definitely seems like jeff is higher on the totem pole right but then let's finally makes his way back he's thirsty and he's poor guy's he's thirsty. thirsty he's begging for water luckily they have water out and so he starts drinking it and the guy tells Jeff that he has to kill Let's, and he makes it clear that it's an order. That was an order. He's like, you expect me to kill him? And that was the one guy, I think Jeff, is that his name, Jeff? The, that yeah. Guy? 
I thought he was Mr. Rabbit. And then he basically ordered that guy. He's like, that's an order. Kill him. And Jeff realizes, like, I can't get out of this. And he's given a rope to strangle Let's. And he does. It's it's really interesting because it... I, I feel like the, 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 the power dynamic was much clearer in the U.S. version. Although all of that's been flipped on its head with how the U.S. version ended, which we haven't still haven't gotten to that yet. Yep, yep. We will, we will very soon. We're going to get to the but, endings of both of them. <laughs> it, it, it definitely, like, the, the, the U.S. version, the, 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 the power mechanic definitely seemed much clearer. Right. Um, in this one, it was kind of like, you know, I don't necessarily know who's at the top. It definitely doesn't seem like it's this, you know, white-haired guy now i don't know like i don't know if he's the person that seems like that but when he needs to put himself in that position and be like uh, no i'm I'm calling the shots and i think i think it is implying that it is him so sh- are, we, are we ready to talk about the end of the episode I'm ready to talk about the end so both of the last episodes i would say and on a, a cliffhanger, essentially. We got the U.S. version. We he, we are at Dr. Stern's place. We hear a knock on the door. And we open the door. And what do we see? Dr. Kevin Christie is duct taped. Duct taped. Thoroughly. Like everything but like his face and mouth. He is duct taped and just delivered. And then we see Arby with a little bit of a smirk on his face, hiding in the bushes. So I'm assuming Arby delivered him. Now, do we think... Okay, so if this is the the season finale is the next episode, right? Yep. Do we think that they're going to start the episode off with having Dr. Christie, you know, if they think he's the White Rabbit and they have Dr. Christie, I I almost feel like Dr. Christie might be like a let situation. You know, it's the gang getting let's they're gonna look on his belly. He doesn't have the the rabbit, rabbit scar. Yeah. So, as and I don't know how you know we the U.S. version of storytelling isn't crazy, but it would seem that like if you're gonna start your final episode, you wouldn't start with having the main antagonist in your possession unless he he gets away because they he could get away they but... they have him but there's not there's not a ton that they can really do because they the milner isn't on their side they can kill him but that doesn't stop the the, the organization from doing what it's doing That's true. i i think that it's going to be one of those situations where he might be able to get out because I, I I don't see anybody else that could you know like it's this is the 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 u s version we've got two big names on the show um I think everybody else is kind of I, I don't mean to be rude, but you know not a list we'll say right. that way I'm not being rude right we have we have two a list actors. And everyone else's, I, I wouldn't even say is, you know, like, C-list. Um, right. So, I think Dr. Kevin Christie is is Mr. Rabbit. Um, I think so, too. I think the white-haired guy in, um, in the UK one could be Mr. Rabbit, or it could still be somebody we haven't met. True, because we still have a second season on that one. And... We do. I, so it does seem like Utopia, you 
US version is going to end with a very nice little bow. Like it seems like all the th threads are going to be tied up enough to make it a good maybe. God, I hope so. It's I mean, it's the show got canceled. Right. So if they if they leave it with a big cliffhanger, it's just going to be like a well where the the UK version I would say that I feel like their final episode can end in a way that would still leave a lot of loose threads. At the end of the UK version, we see Ian take Grant and Alice to Dugdale, who Dugdale, you know, mm. he he's trying to fight the White Rabbit the whole time, or he's trying to fight not the White Rabbit, Jeff, essentially. Yep. Jeff doesn't think he's going to be a threat. Finally, he has the evidence against him. And to patch things up with his wife, who has now found out that this Russian prostitute is going to have his baby, that she wants to keep the baby. The wife that couldn't get pregnant wants to keep the baby and get rid of that person and he basically goes to jeff and says pay me off i'll be I, by my silence you won't hear anything from me anymore and jeff is kind of seeming to agree with it he's like yeah yeah all right that's that's the plan so we see ian take you know milner gave ian and becky the or ian Ian and Becky, that information that Dugdale has could have information to get you out of it. Ian goes there with Grant and Alice. He starts talking to Dugdale and he shows him Grant. He's like, you know that kid that shot up the school? Here he is. Like, we're in deep. Like, can do you have anything that can help us? They show him the vaccine. He picks up the phone and the emergency hotline service in the UK is not 911. It's, it's 999. Whole, it's 999. I thought, Think. isn't it a long one? I thought it was longer than that because there was a whole like jingle to it. I'm pr I, I believe it's 999 and he only clicked the phone three times. He only clicked the phone three times. I did notice that. And so instantly I was like, oh God trouble is afoot and yep so he 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 says he's calling somebody else right i think he's he's calling like the scientist you know right right, right. um donaldson in donaldson. order to mm -hmm. you know because donaldson would be somebody that could you know deal with a, a vaccine um so that's his story and you know you can tell and and he's trying to be nice and keep them there and he's looking at the kids like you you guys want food you know, trying to make them comfortable. Um, Ian is not comfortable with being there for a prolonged period of time. So he's like, I've, you know, given you We're the information. Go. Here's the vaccines. We'll meet back up. He opens the front door. Police. And they book it towards them. Bum rush. And they run out the back door. Thank God the back door was open. They run out the back door. Ian and Alice jump through a fence, free and clear. The police tackle Grant. Tackle, brought down. Yeah, they've got him. So the police have Grant. And that is the end of the UK episode five. And this is why I have that feeling that episode six might not give us the closure we're looking for for utopia the uk version i'm excited to see where it goes i you know it's it's we're down to the last one my my hopes are that it um mostly wraps up the big storylines and kind of introduces or teases out what's next to come. Um, 
you know, I, I think it's, I think it can be a little bit tough if you've just got like one giant arc without having right. at least, you know, season arcs. Right. So I, I, I definitely hope that we have some level of closure. Um, I definitely don't think that all the threads will get tied up. Right. Um, very curious to see where it goes. I'm, I'm really, really curious to see what what ha happens with the uh, the U.S. version. You know, I think it was done early enough that they'd seen both both, both seasons. seasons of the. Yeah, you know, I'm a little surprised that I don't feel like I've really seen anything new in there that they might have taken from season two maybe maybe harvest you know this idea that they like grow kids that could certainly be a season two thing yeah um i'm a little surprised that like having and obviously we don't know because we haven't seen season two right but it, it doesn't really feel like season one of the u.s version has anything kind of like groundbreaking that they're setting up you know that we're not seeing in the uk version right i feel like all the things that we see in the u.s version that we're not seeing in the uk version most of the time it's like trying to better explain things because they don't trust the audience so it's like let's right. let's do it slightly differently and do it in a way that we can just explain the crap out of it because they can't figure it out on their own I think, yeah, that's the biggest thing is they flushed out Harvest more. They went really in depth with inner workings. They brought in new characters with Lily and Dale. They got all these new, they like really wanted to flesh out Harvest and this secret right. organization versus the UK one. You know, I don't feel like we know anything about it except, well, we know where it came from what's kind of happening with it and what's the overall goal of it but we don't know like we don't know all this like we don't of all the guys that we have seen working for the network we've only seen basically the history of arby everyone else jeff let's the other guy we don't know anything about we're we flush out Christy as a character if he is Mr. Rabbit, you know. We've seen him from the beginning. We've seen his family. We've seen his day-to-day -day operations. We see him get mad. We see... We we see more of his emotion. Oh, yeah. We, we actually... Um, a big moment that I forgot to point out is a meeting between him and his son, Thomas. Um... Thomas keeps dropping the ball with things, you know, and uh, Lily going off script is a big ball drop. Oper no, I think actually it was um, Operation Fun Operation. having to be deployed. Like, even though that's technically, you know, should be um, should be handling uh, Dr. Mike, it, it shouldn't have to be released. Like, he, right. he's unhappy that it got to the point where they have to use it. Right. Um, and and Thomas is like, no, 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 it's 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 cool. I already have a plan, you know. And he explains his plan for how to deal with it. And Doctor Kevin Chrissy says something like, "Great idea. I really needed you to have a great idea." <laughs> and then it cuts to his son, and there's like, he goes from like being so high of like, you know, excited about explaining this plan to like. He can tell he's really disappointed his dad. Right. And yeah, I I actually took the note that it was like the first time we saw him mad. Like the first time that we saw him lose his cool. Like, you know, even in the first episode we meet him, they interview him, they ask him the questions. He's like that fake mad, you know, like. And, right. you know, because we know later on that he wanted to be blamed with Simpro. Like they wanted Simpro to be the red herring and right so it was like a fake mad this was the first time we saw him mad and that's you know john cusack great acting you know fake mad first off real mad second off it he's a great actor it, hands down he's the best part of 
of the show. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely love it. Definitely love his his portrayal of the character. Um, he he's he's carrying it a little bit. I am very excited for next week. Final episodes. We finally get to see where it's going to go, and all of you will get to ride along with us and see what we think. Yep. So thanks for stopping by. Uh, join us for the season finale of both Utopias next week. I'm Mark. I'm Sterling. We've had fun with you. Hit that like and notif- hit that like and subscribe. Hit that bell for notifications. And we'll see you next time. Comment below. Share with your friends. Comment on other people's comments. Uh, nice comments. Or not friendly I mean, comments. You know. Be once, once we have once we have a once we yeah, you know, actually, yes, be respectful. I was gonna say I just want comments regardless, but that's that's a No. That's, that's a slippery a, slope. You just want that's a slippery slope. We don't want comments <laughs> yes. regardless. We want yes, yeah. respectful comments. Treat everybody respectful. Treat everybody like you were at home, like you were raised in home. Absolutely. Treat everybody like you were raised by harvest. That <laughs> You are like what humans should be, or whatever the the phrase was, but not the special humans that might have been treated differently and might be Harvey, but like the normal ones. Right. All right, guys. We'll see you next time. (laughs) We'll see you next time.